I ended the previous video by talking about abatement. So let me describe more clearly now what we implicitly assumed before. With no abatement possible, we assume something like the following. If output was zero, pollution would be zero. If output was 10, maybe pollution was 1. If output was 20, pollution was 2. If output was 30, pollution was 3, and so forth. In other words, there was a rigid link between output and pollution. To the extent that we could draw a horizontal axis, and it really didn't matter whether we labeled it as, out, as output, or labeled it as pollution because those just differed by a constant. But now we want to break this iron link between output and pollution. We want to say that the firm has an abatement technology available. So abatement means a pollution reduction technology, which means that, for example, the firm might keep output at 10. If it chose not to abate pollution, then the pollution level would be 1. But if it chose to abate pollution, the pollution might go down to, let's say, 3 quarters. Or if it decided to work even harder at abatement, then abatement might go down to 1 half. So now there's a difference between output and pollution. There's not this fixed link anymore between output and pollution. Abatement is going to be costly, and that's the next thing we're going to study. In terms of graphs, once you give the firm an opportunity to engage in abatement technology, it has two ways to reduce pollution. Before, it only had one way. If you wanted to reduce pollution, the, if you wanted to reduce pollution, the only way to do it is to redu was to reduce output. But if you have an abatement technology available, then you can, you can do the same as you did before. You could reduce pollution by reducing output. But you could also reduce pollution by spending money on an abatement technology. This, of course, is a more complicated setting because now the firm can reduce pollution in two ways, not just one way. And it's going to mean that we're not going to be able to to draw graphs with either output or pollution. I should have, this should have been the word or here. Um, change it a little bit. We're not going to be able to draw graphs that have an axis with either output or pollution on them. We're going to have to separate pollution from output because they're potentially not quite different. I said abatement costs money. We need to talk about that. Abatement versus abatement cost. So we're going to assume the simplest possible uh, relationship. Well, perhaps it's not the simplest possible, but uh, it, it's the simplest one that, that makes natural economic sense, and that's this kind of relationship. As abatement goes up, of course, abatement cost go up, goes up, so you, you knew I was going to draw something that had a positive slope. And this graph assumes that when abatement goes up, around here, abatement cost doesn't rise very much. But if you had the same increase in abatement over here, then you'd have a really big increase in abatement cost, like this big. In other words, as you go to the right in this graph, each additional unit of abatement has a higher and higher and higher cost. This seems to be a pretty reasonable 
assumption because the idea is that if you're not engaging in any abatement at all, engaging in a little, uh, changing your policy and engaging in a little bit of abatement just gets the quote unquote low hanging fruit, the, the things that are easy to do. And so it's not very expensive. But if you're already engaging in a lot of abatement and you want to clean up even more pollution, then it's going to be pretty difficult. And that translates into, in this model as being pretty expensive. You won't be surprised that we next want to learn about marginal abatement cost. And just briefly, if the initial level of abatement is small, you'll recall that the marginal is given by the slope of a tangent line. And if I draw a tangent line uh, to the abatement cost curve here, I get approximately this. But if I have a higher level of abatement, and I draw a tangent line to the abatement cost there, I get a steeper line, a steeper tangent line. And so what that means is that the marginal abatement cost, which is fairly low on the left, gets higher on the right. If I were to draw a tangent line corresponding to this even higher level of abatement, that tangent line would look approximately like this, which it has an even higher slope. So as you go from left to right, these tangent lines become steeper, and so the marginal abatement cost becomes steeper. So I have some kind of relationship like this. As you go from left to right, marginal abatement cost goes up. Now I have no idea what the shape of this is besides that it's upward sloping. It might look like this. It might be straight. It might look like this. It might have wiggles in it. As long as it's upward sloping, we don't know. And at this point, and for our purposes, we don't care what other characteristics the marginal abatement cost curve has. What's important is that it's going to be upward sloping. Next, again, unsurprisingly, I'm going to abbreviate the marginal abatement cost by MAC. So let's ask, instead of putting a tax on pollution, suppose we put a tax on non-abatement. So the firm doesn't want to abate pollution. It, I mean, it, it just wants to pollute as much as it wants to. Fine, it's going to have to pay. But if it wants to engage in abatement, then we'll reduce its, the taxes that it has to pay. Let's see how that would work out with a graph. If the firm wants to go out and be totally green, it can abate all its pollution, get rid of all its pollution. And let's say that this here is a level of zero pollution. We can just ignore anything to the right of that because we're not interested in the government, we're not interested in the company reducing other firms' pollution, as it were. So zero pollution is as far as as, as we're interested in. And what we're going to say is that if the firm abates to this extent, then it doesn't have to pay any taxes. The tax on non-abatement, I'm going to write that a little 
little bit better. Suppose it's this go to the straight edge. We have our zero pollution level. And we'll just ignore everything to the right of that. Suppose that the firm isn't going to be so environmentally sensitive as to go all the way to zero pollution. It's going to engage in some abatement, but not all the way to get to zero pollution. So let's say that the actual amount of abatement that the firm engages in is, is this, right, right here at this point. Then it's going to have to pay a tax. And the tax that it's going to have to pay is going to be a function of how much it falls below the zero pollution line, which is this horizontal distance. The distance between the abatement it engages in and the maximum amount of abatement it could engage in if it wanted to produce zero pollution. And the amount of the tax is going to be, the marginal tax rate is going to be here. And so the amount of the tax, this is the tax in dollars, so this isn't the marginal, this is the the actual total tax is going to be this rectangle. Now you can see if the firm decides to become more environmentally sensitive and move this line to the right, then the amount of taxes that it's going to have to pay is going to shrink. And if on the other hand it decided it didn't care as much about the environment anymore, and move the abatement to the left, then the amount of tax would increase. That, that rectangle would increase in size. Now the next question is, if we introduce the marginal abatement cost and a tax on non-abatement, how is a firm going to respond? So let me pause for a minute to um, erase some of the things on the right so I have a bit more room. So we're basically going to put this graph together with this graph and see what happens. So you have abatement. And we have a marginal abatement cost curve. And suppose we have this as the tax on non-abatement. What I claim is that the firm is going to engage in the following level of abatement. Let me call this a, um, a pi. Suppose that the 
level of zero pollution is here. And so the resulting amount of the tax payment is this rectangle. And the question is, how does the firm decide on a pi rather than some other level of abatement? The firm has a choice. It can abate and escape the tax, or it can not abate and pay the tax. What it's going to do is whatever is cheapest. Suppose the firm considered, instead of a pi, abating, let's say, at a1. At a1, abatement's not very expensive for the firm. But it decides not to do it. And it, it, that is, it decides not to go beyond a1. And therefore, if it doesn't go beyond a1, it's going to have to pay a whole lot of taxes. So all this area, all the way over to the, the zero pollution level, and below, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but it would have to pay all that much money in taxes. Now, why would it choose to not pollute and therefore have to pay this marginal tax rate when its option I mean not not to not to abate and therefore pay this this high marginal tax rate when its option is to just do some abatement which doesn't cost a whole lot it only costs this much and then it's not gonna have to pay those taxes so in other words when the marginal abatement cost curve is below the tax line it'd be crazy to pay the taxes. It's just a lot cheaper to abate. And so a position like A1 is not going to be optimal for the firm. It's not going to be profit maximizing for, for the firm because it's 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 um, paying a whole lot of taxes and it could avoid those taxes just by abatement and abatement doesn't cost a whole lot of money. I next want to argue that a position like A2 is not profit maximizing for the firm either. It, it, if, it, if it abates all the way to A2, it's doing good things to the environment. But look at the marginal abatement cost that it's incurring. It's paying a whole lot of money for pollution control. If it reduced the amount of money that it paid for pollution control by reducing abatement a little bit, the amount of costs that it would save are along the MAC curve. The amount of taxes that it would have to pay, because you know, if you decide not to abate, well, you're gonna have to pay taxes. But the amount of taxes that it have to pay only go along the tax line, and tax line is below. So as long as the tax line is below the marginal abatement cost curve, the optimal thing for the firm to do is go for the cheaper thing, which is paying the tax. So A2 is not optimal. What the firm ought to do is pay the tax instead. And this is the way I argue that A pi is the optimal thing. To the left of A pi, is not optimal because it's like the situation A1, the, uh, the firm is going along the, uh, the, the firm is having to pay the tax, but it ought to abate instead. Okay, let's think, let's think about it this way. Where is abatement cheaper than paying the tax? To the left of A pi, abatement is cheaper than paying the tax, so you ought to abate. But to the right of A pi, abatement is more expensive than paying the tax. So you had to pay the tax. And these considerations prove 
that a pi is where the firm wants to go. To summarize then, what we're saying is that if you have abatement and you have an MAC curve, marginal abatement cost curve, and you have a tax on non-abatement, and you want to know what the firm wants to do, the answer is start from your tax on non-abatement, go to your MAC curve, drop a line down, and that is going to show a pi the amount of abatement that the firm wishes to engage in. Now, if you're a social planner, you can do this the other way. You can target a level of abatement, let's say this, and ask if, if I want to get this level of abatement, sure, you can do it via command and control by just saying it's illegal to abate less than a pi. But if you don't want to do it by command and control, if you want to do it with an economic incentive instrument, this tax on on abatement, then what you do is to say, okay, I want the firm to respond to my tax with a level of a pi. How high should my tax be? So I start at a pi, go up to the MAC curve and over, and that tells me what tax on non-abatement I should set in order to induce the firm to reply with a pi. So this is the idea behind economic incentive instruments. The government knows what, the, what it wants the firm to do. It could use command and control to just demand that the firm do that. But it doesn't have to. It can also set the appropriate tax level to induce the firm to, on its own accord, say, well, if that's what the tax is going to be, the optimal thing for me to do is such and such and such and such, and that turns out to be exactly what the government wants the firm to do. Okay, that's enough for this video.